You are under arrest, my lord. The words spoken by Mace Windu ring out in righteous triumph as he holds the tip of his amethyst blade at the throat of Darth Sidious. Whether or not Palpatine threw this fight on purpose, he is now on the ground and at the mercy of the Master of the Order. Mace Windu has long been preparing for this singular moment and declared that Palpatine was under arrest. However, after deflecting a torrent of force lightning and disfiguring the Supreme Chancellor, Mace Windu changes his mind. He suddenly declares that Sidious is too dangerous to be left alive and decides to end the life of the Sith. This is all despite Anakin standing next to him reminding him of the Jedi way, the same code that Anakin himself felt extreme guilt about after violating when he killed Dooku. Perhaps had Mace Windu stayed his blade, kept to the Jedi path, Anakin would not have acted out against him. So why didn't Master Mace Windu arrest Palpatine as he had intended to? What drove him to take such drastic measures? Well, in today's video, we are going to visit the titular scene in Revenge of the Sith to understand why Mace Windu changed his mind about Palpatine's fate so quickly. When Windu entered the office of the Supreme Chancellor with the other Jedi, he desperately hoped that when they drew their lightsabers, Palpatine would be just as scared and confused as an old man would have been instead of transform into the monster that the Jedi feared he really was. But he wasn't what they feared. He was so, so much worse. And so for the first time in history, Mace Windu's Vapad reached its absolute peak. It was the form which was meant to reflect the opponent's dark side back onto them, and the stronger the opponent was with the darkness, the stronger the form could achieve. In this instance, Vapad reached its mastery, and it was not enough still to defeat Darth Sidious only stalemate him. When Anakin entered the office of the duel, he could sense through the force that Mace Windu had let go of all Jedi restraint and was now cutting loose, and Anakin was afraid. The Revenge of the Sith novel tells us that Windu feels a shatter point, and in the shatter point, he senses something intriguing. He senses fear. Windu's ability allowed him to sense what were called shatter points in the force, monumental places of significance in time, this could present itself as a weakness in an enemy, or even in a structure, or a shatter point could allow Mace Windu to perceive when a certain moment in time would have great implications on the future. At this moment, Windu mistakenly believes that the fear is Palpatine's, and uses it as an extra leverage to disarm him and end the duel quickly. Finally, Windu declares that Sidious is under arrest, and despite having a quarter of the Jedi Council murdered in front of his eyes, and having the knowledge that the leader of the Grand Republic is a Sith Lord, he still held on to the last bit of the Jedi Code, a code that made Mace Windu the Jedi that he was. But then, he realized that the fear that he sensed was not Palpatine, it was coming from somewhere else in the room. The fear belonged to Anakin Skywalker. Sidious sensed nothing when Anakin approached. He felt no apprehension, nor concern. If anything, Palpatine was extremely satisfied. Windu had barely enough time to register this terrible new information before Sidious leapt back to life, blasting him with force lightning. Windu in this moment feels the full might of the Sith. Sidious is stronger than Yoda, and his speciality is force lightning. The sheer magnitude of his power made Anakin cover his face, stumbling backwards. And while Vapad was able to reflect the lightning back onto Sidious, the Dark Lord was using the pain to fountain back even more power. At one point in the novel, Mace Windu shouts to Anakin to help him and to strike down Sidious before he grows too powerful. In this moment, Sidious is overwhelming Vapad with force lightning and may have succeeded had he not had to stop. Unfortunately, the ability had backfired onto the Sith Lord, and he was now experiencing his own lightning, and as a result, it was killing him. But it was here where Mace Windu changed his mind. Several things were registering to him at once. First, Darth Sidious was the Chancellor. He had control of the Senate and the courts, and if the Jedi tried to bring him to trial, it would be a joke. He had all the Senators in his pocket. He had been in power for so long, his roots ran deep and there would be no amount of a lawful process that the Jedi could go through that Palpatine could not manipulate. Next, Windu could not believe just how powerful Sidious really was. Windu knew of Yoda's strength, and would later even believe that Dooku was the true Dark Lord of the Sith after he managed to match Yoda in power. Even that was a hard pill for Mace Windu to swallow. But for Sidious to be even stronger, in the novel, Windu is so vexed after feeling the Force Lightning that he shouts at Palpatine, calling him a disease. That kind of power should never exist, and certainly not in the power of a Darksider. This is the first time that Windu feels the full might of what Palpatine really is. And third, the nail in the coffin. Sidious was calling out for Anakin to help him. Mace Windu realized he truly trusted Anakin in this moment, and now Anakin was defending him, 
telling Windu that Palpatine had to stand trial and that he needed him. This is why Windu reared his blade backwards to begin with. He realized that he had to end it all there. He couldn't let Palpatine manipulate the Chosen One. The destiny to destroy the Sith was in Windu's hands. But not directly, through Anakin. And Anakin was about to turn. He sensed just how much the Chancellor trusted the Chosen One. How much the Sith trusted the Jedi. It was a decision based on several factors, and while they were valid, Mace Windu was too hasty in this moment. He didn't think about the implications of the action. Palpatine was already twisting the tail, saying that Mace Windu had not tried to arrest him, but rather had tried to assassinate him, to take over the Republic. Windu's actions, while not for the reasons Palpatine accused him of, still did nothing to dissuade Anakin from believing the Sith. In this moment, Mace Windu was not thinking correctly. All the reasons we listed were backed by Mace Windu's decision, but what led to him making this decision all had to do with how mentally unstable he had become, how the Clone Wars and the Sith decimated his mental fortitude. During his entire career as a Jedi, Windu staunchly obeyed the code. Whether for good or ill, Windu was rigid in the ways of the light side. He believed that the Jedi was the only correct path for those desiring to learn the ways of the Force, and it was this rigidity that served his purpose in ascending the ranks of the Jedi, landing a permanent position on the High Council, and then becoming its leader. Windu could define himself by a single word, and that word was certainty. For his whole life, he knew of only one thing. The certainty of the Jedi's role in protecting the Republic, but times became uncertain when the Sith returned. It was uncertain how or why the clone army had been created for a war which conveniently began the moment they discovered it. It was uncertain why Dooku fell to the dark side, why he became a Sith, uncertain where or who Darth Sidious was, if Darth Sidious even existed at all. The dark side clouded the Jedi's vision and all other Jedi along with him. And for Mace Windu, who had the gift of being able to perceive shatter points, this was the ultimate affront to his certainty. He was sensing shatter points everywhere, but was unable to connect them to anything because of the dark side and its large veil. All of this is to explain that during the waning days of the Clone Wars, Windu was not as he was earlier. In the Revenge of the Sith novel, we see several moments with Obi-Wan where he is speaking with Windu privately. Sometimes Yoda is present, but during their conversation, Obi-Wan notices something frightening about Mace Windu. After having been recalled from the front lines of war to deal with the politics of Coruscant, Windu has become paranoid. Kenobi describes him as having a dark and a wild look in his eye. The horrors of the Clone Wars have been difficult on everyone, but Mace Windu had spent months on Coruscant dealing with backstabbing bureaucrats and Senate nonsense, all attempting to find Darth Sidious. They had managed to track Sidious to Palpatine's inner circle, but were unsure of who it could be. They never suspected Palpatine himself. He was already the Chancellor. He already ruled the galaxy, and why would anyone want to take over when they already commanded it? Palpatine had to be a puppet figure from the sidelines, but to their frustration, Mace and the High Council, the Jedi were completely incapable of nailing down where or who Darth Sidious was. During an early private council meeting between Yoda, Windu, and Kenobi, Mace Windu went completely out of character and argued with Yoda directly, very passionately. Windu was prepared to have the Jedi move against the office of the Chancellor immediately. He was even proposing that the Jedi forcefully take control of the Senate for the time being, to weed out the Dark Lord. Obi-Wan was so shocked by this when he was hearing it that he was stunned into silence. The meeting got so bad that Yoda had to literally shout at Windu, saying that they needed proof before they could make any action. Windu had a crazy look in his eyes that revealed he was ready to do anything to stop all of this. He was unstable, and even though he was doing his best to keep it together, he was failing. He was at the cusp of ending the war that had torn his beloved Republic to shreds, a war which had driven many Jedi mad to the dark side, including the man that he looked up to, Dooku. In Legends, even Mace Windu's own Padawan would run into the dark side with Depa Balaba, putting her into a coma from which she would never awake. Windu lost basically everything to this war, except for the Jedi way, except for the Republic. But soon, the Sith would take that from him too. In the film, when he is informed that Palpatine is Sidious, he is very calm, but the novel plays out much differently. He is running a million miles a minute in his mind, and it is here where something important is revealed. Mace Windu does have an attachment, a secret love. That love is the Republic itself. He has given his life for his love, taken lives for it, seen innocents die for it, 
watched the Jedi put its very identity on the line for it. And if Palpatine was Sidious, this all meant nothing. It would make the war, everything they suffered, a game. Just because he was Mace Windu, Master of the Order, he takes this blow without so much as a change of expression. But something inside of Mace Windu breaks in this moment. As much as he tries to keep it together, his paranoia gets the better of him, and he tried to end it all himself in a pure moment of panic. But of course, Windu was so tunnel visioned on himself that he missed everything that Anakin was feeling. Anakin had been the key all along, and now it was too late. And that is why Mace Windu did not arrest Palpatine. There is a whole lot more context in the book around Mace Windu, and how he's feeling, and operating in Revenge of the Sith. And it honestly makes him a whole lot more interesting of a character. He's not thinking in his right mind. He's been through war. He's lost nearly everything. And he's trying not to lose the one thing that he truly loves, and cares about. The Republic. And because of that, when he should have been thinking about Anakin, he was thinking about himself. He was so fearful, and that fear ultimately did destroy Mace Windu. But as always, my friends, I'm eager to hear your thoughts in this moment. And as always, thank you so much for supporting and watching the channel. And as always, may the Force be with you.